Angels, it's day two in the 30 day cleaning challenge with me, Hayley. Today we are moving on to home electronics. These are gonna be things like Xbox controllers, remote controls, computer keyboards, mouses, even Fitbits if you have one. We are gonna be tackling these areas and getting them clean and finding different ways to keep them organized. TV remotes are often neglected when it comes to cleaning, but this should not be the case. In a recent study, it found that remote controls are 20 times dirtier than your toilet. And Fitbits contained eight times the amount of bacteria found on a common toilet flush and handle. Like many electrical devices, we use these things fairly often, but we tend to favor cleaning things like our toilet and our kitchen sink over these electrical devices, which means they get pushed on the back burner and they can end up a walking, talking bacteria in your home. Today, I want us to clean, disinfect, and organize all of our electrical appliances within our home, so let's get into the clean. For this vlog, we are going to be using some dish soap, a Dettol spray, some antibacterial hand sanitizer, a toothbrush, or you can use your OXO Good Grips if you have them, and you are also gonna need your vacuum with your dust attachment. to electrical appliances, we need to be sure that we are giving them a deep clean that they require, but we don't want to oversaturate them. So, first of all, we're gonna go in with our damp cloth. This needs to be really wrung out so it's not really wet. So if you can squeeze it and water comes out, it's too wet. Then you are just gonna wipe over the remote control. Now, upon doing this, you can see that this is cleaning the remote control. However, because of the buttons, it's not getting into these sections here. We do not want that because it means that the germs and bacteria are not actually being cleaned off. They're, they're, they're finding homes elsewhere, is what I'm trying to say. These ones are like, bye Fred, I'm going. And then these ones are like, oh well, you snooze, you lose. We hid in the corner, they're not getting us. So. Make sure you wipe over the whole remote. This is the first process we're going to be doing. And do the base of it, do the top of it. Then we are gonna go in with our toothbrush or our OXO Good Grips. So these are the OXO Good Grips. These are really good and I love these because of the, especially the silicon ones, these are ideal for getting around the buttons. However, we don't just wanna go around the buttons with no product on this because that isn't going to be sanitizing or killing off any germs and bacteria that is on the remote control. So, you're gonna go ahead and get your antibacterial gel. Take a clean, dry microfiber cloth and you're gonna pour a pea-sized amount onto the cloth. Once that pea-sized amount of antibacterial gel is on your microfiber cloth, what you're gonna do is either take your good grips or your toothbrush, I'll just use a toothbrush because I'm guessing most of us will have these at home, and just scoop some of it up. You really don't need loads of this onto the actual toothbrush. And don't like push deep down in, you want it to be sitting on the very top of the bristles. Then once you have done that, you are going to start the process of going over all of the buttons. This is gonna ensure that any spots that we've missed with our cloth, they're gonna be wiped out, sister. They're gonna be obliterated. They're not gonna to live to fight another day on your remote control. And this is even more important as well. If you've got toddlers at home or young children, they often, well, my children did, maybe my children are just quite feral, but when my children were younger, they would always put the remote control in their mouth. Like, if they got a hold of the remote control, they would pick it up and use it as like a chew toy. So this is really, really important to do this. Obviously, if you have children around the house, like small children that are gonna be putting things in their mouths because you don't want them to get poorly um, from the germs that do linger on remote controls. Now you've done that, you're gonna add another pea size amount back onto your microfiber cloth and we are gonna use this now to wipe over 
the entire remote control. The reason I like to use the hand sanitizer gel is it's quick dry. Our process here when cleaning electrical appliances is to clean them efficiently but not get them wet because they're just going to break. This is a really good way of cleaning them efficiently, making sure that all the germs and bacteria are gone and they're killed, but you're not ruining your devices at the same time. remote controls organized I really like to put them in things like these so this is just an old candle jar if you've got any of these around your home you might have been gifted some candles for Christmas keep a hold of the jars because these are really really useful when it comes to storage solutions for things like remote controls will be exactly the same method that you are going to use on any gaming controllers and other controls that you have around your home. Once you have done all of the remote controls and gaming controls within your home, we are going to move on to computer keyboards. Now, the method here is slightly different. First of all, you're going to want to make sure you've unplugged your keyboard or taken the batteries out if you have a wireless one. This is just to make sure that you don't have a load of jargon and your computer freaking out and being like, why, why are you tapping me? Because we are gonna be giving this a really good deep clean. Keyboards are utterly filthy and they do require deep cleaning, especially when you have a bunch of kids at home doing their schoolwork online. Once we've unplugged our keyboard, we then need to go in with our dust attachment. Keyboards pick up lots of dust and debris, and this is the best way to remove it. You can obviously use like a feather duster. However, those of you that have been here for a while will know I am not a fan of this method. I just feel like you're lifting dust back into the air and it's not using your time effectively. So let's vacuum off any of the debris on here. As you can see, there's bits of pet fur here that looks like some sort of crumb from probably a biscuit that one of the children were eating. And I want all of that gone before we embark on cleaning the keyboard. the keyboard we are then going to go in with our damp cloth again this is just dish soap on this and you don't want it really really wet you just want it slightly damp and just go over the entire keyboard I'm gonna flip this over in a second and do the back as well and because the keys press down what you'll find is we don't need to go in with the toothbrush over these. You can if you want, but again, I just think I don't wanna make work harder for you guys. There's no need to go over it with a toothbrush. If you push down on each button, you can effectively get into all the little crevices anyway, just with the cloth. And our final process, you'll see in a second, is gonna eliminate um, any bits that may have been missed. mist of this you're not going to spray it directly on to the keyboard you're going to almost hover it so that the droplets from this gently 
spread out over the keyboard. This is then going to be where the disinfectant phase comes in and that is how you clean a keyboard. We are now going to head over to the sink and clean our Fitbits. Some of you might not have these, so if you don't, then well done for completing day two of the challenge. For those of you that do have Fitbits or these sort of devices, then stick around because I am going to show you a really quick and easy way how to clean them. And it's all in the wrist band. <laughs> The main place where germs and bacteria tend to hang out on these types of devices is in the strap. These need to be removed and you can just place them into your sink. This is just normal dish soap that I'm using here. And once you've given them a really good scrub and clean, we are then going to head over and sanitise them. And you only need to, you, I'd say if you do this maybe weekly, that will be sufficient enough when it comes to cleaning your Fitbit. Now that you have scrubbed it, you can go ahead and move on to disinfecting it. For this, I am going to be using the Seflora. I'm using the Country Garden one. This is delightful. I've just started using this, guys, and I freaking love it and just pop a capful into the sink with your strap and this will make it smell nice as well so there you go brucey bonus and just leave it soaking for about 10 to 15 minutes and then once that's done you can put it on the side let it air dry and then it is good to go so much guys for joining me in day two of the cleaning and organizing challenge with me Hayley and thank you for all of you that have been sending me your pictures over on Instagram I am so excited that you guys are getting behind this this is gonna be the best at the end of these 30 days we are all gonna feel like new people I'm telling you stick with it we've got this tomorrow we will be moving on to day three and we are up in the anti team so wear your comfiest clothes and don't forget if you are enjoying the 30 day cleaning challenge share it with your friends and family and get them involved too we can be a great big community that at the end of this we are going to have the most pristine houses in the uk in the world in the universe in New Zealand <laughs> see you all tomorrow guys and if you haven't done so already yet go ahead and click on the notification bell so that you are notified as soon as the day free cleaning and organizing with Hayley is live bye guys love you